What's going on swim fans? In this video, I'm gonna share with you the five biggest mistakes that swimmers make in butterfly. Whether you're a veteran to the sport or you're a beginner and you're just getting started with butterfly, I guarantee you're gonna learn something new in this video. So make sure you watch it until the very end. I'm not only gonna share what the biggest mistakes are, but how you can actually improve upon yourself, take your technique to the next level. If you guys are new here, welcome to my swim pro where we share the latest and greatest to help you improve your performance and health both in and out of the water. So make Make sure you're subscribed, like this video, and let me know in the comments which of these mistakes you're struggling with. Let's go ahead and get right into it. The first mistake is lifting the head too high on the breath. So in butterfly, for the most part, you take your breath looking forward. You can breathe to the side, but that's a little bit more complicated. We'll talk about that in another video. When you're swimming butterfly, you've gotta lift your head up to breathe. I'm not saying don't breathe. What we're trying to do is limit the amount that your head comes out of the water because what goes up must come down. So when your head comes up, your butt sinks, it drops like a rock, especially in butterfly. Breaststroke and the short axis strokes, very similar concept. If you look at my beautiful drawing right here, give me a thumbs up if you guys like my illustration here. This dotted line is the surface of the water, the line of the water. And when you lift your head up, you wanna keep just your chin at the surface level of the water. I know when I was growing up swimming butterfly, I would pull myself up so high and the water line was like in the middle of my chest. And little did I know I was actually making myself go so slow because my legs were just dragging in the water. Now, when you're younger and you don't have as much muscle mass, you might actually be able to get away with that and you can swim pretty fast. But as you get older, as you get more mature and you have more muscle on your frame and maybe you're not a naturally gifted swimmer like most, your legs are gonna start to sink. So when you take your breath, think about keeping your chin at the surface level of the water. Now, it's not so much that you need to be at the surface, you wanna reduce how much higher your chin comes out of the water. Because even if it's up for a fraction of a second, a little bit higher, that's gonna cause your legs to sink. So if you've seen Michael Phelps swim, it's beautiful surface level of the water's right here. It's like he's ready to just devour the oxygen, just um, air. And that's what you wanna do. As soon as you get your breath, you drop your head back down and you press your chest down and your hips come up even higher in the water. So first mistake, lifting your head too high. And you know, even the most advanced swimmers at the end of a race or the end of a butterfly set, this is something that's really difficult to maintain. It happens in workouts. So focus on keeping your head position right in line with the surface level of the water. The second, second biggest mistake is sweeping wide after the hand entry. And what I mean by this is after you take your stroke, right, you, you place your hands in the water and you start to pull, a lot of swimmers, especially when they fatigue and if they're not as strong, will start to sweep out really wide. And if you watch this underwater, some swimmers will sweep out like, you know, a full meter out. And at some point underwater, the arms are this far apart. I don't know if my arms are still in the frame right now, but your arms are so far apart. You wanna think about this as two freestyle strokes happening at the same time. And the more power that you can have in the water and the more control that you have, the easier this will become. This normally falls apart at the end of a length. So at the end of the 25, at the end of the 50, the hands normally start to sweep more and more as you fatigue because it takes more work, quite frankly, to be able to pull in that straight line. And also make sure you're not entering too narrow. You wanna be at 11 and 12, or 11 and one, and after you at 11 and one, you start to pull in that same line. And that pulling pattern is two freestyle strokes at the same time. That's the simplest way to think about it. Not really, but it's the simplest way to think about it. Two freestyle strokes at the same time. Third biggest mistake is bending elbows on the recovery phase of the stroke. Now you might have seen Mark Spitz Olympic legend, swim butterfly with what looks like a bent elbow recovery, meaning the part of the stroke that's over the water, the elbows are actually bent and it's almost like two freestyle strokes coming at you forward at the same time. I'm not a fan of that style of butterfly. I focus on as soon as you exit, you finish the stroke, your arm should be completely straight and your elbows locked out and you have a straight arm recovery over the water. Now a more advanced concept of this is actually timing the power from below the water to be different than above the water. What do I mean by this? When you're on the pull phase and your arms are underneath the water, you actually wanna have more power and explosiveness on this part of the stroke to really pull your body forward. And then on the recovery, it's a little bit more controlled, a little bit slower. I don't wanna say slower, but it's more controlled. And if you watch any of the best swimmers in the world, 
Michael Phelps, Caleb Dressel, Sarah Hoistrom, any of these swimmers. It's all power under the water with a very clean and controlled recovery with a straight arm. None of those guys and girls are bending their arms on the recovery. Something to think about. The fourth biggest mistake is bending the knees too much. Now, I have this beautiful sign graph. It's like a wave, like go with the flow. Again, if you like my illustrations, make sure you drop a comment or give me a like. But bending the knees is a huge no-no because when you bend your knees, that means you're creating more resistance. Now, I have here the mistake is too much. Keyword on too much because bending the knees is actually natural. You don't swim flat. You actually want to have an undulating pattern driven with your chest and your hips especially, but through your hips to your knees and pointing your toes, it should be mostly straight. As straight as you can. You are going to bend your knees, but you don't want to bend your knees too much because it's just going to create more resistance. So really focus on keeping your body in this nice wave pattern. A great drill that I like for that is flow drill. On the surface of the water, your arms are going to be out like Superman and you're just doing the dolphin kick motion. You are bending your knees just a little bit. If you want to wear fins, if you want to wear a snorkel, it makes it a lot easier. But I do recommend that drill and even dolphin kicking on your back and streamline. Streamline kick on back, great thing to work on. You can even do it with a kickboard. But really focus on keeping your knees relative, not straight, but not bending them too much. Let's go ahead and get into the final mistake, but I actually have a bonus one for you guys, so stay tuned. <laughs> bonus number five, not having a consistent breathing pattern. We've talked about breathing already. Breathing in butterfly is forward, and you want to make sure you have a rhythm to it. So whether it's every stroke or every two strokes, you want to know what your pattern is in the workout, in the race, doesn't really matter. So what I mean by that is it doesn't really make sense to do, you know, we're going to do six 100s IM in a 25 meter pool. And on the first one, you're only going to take one breath because you feel fresh on that first 25 butterfly. You feel good. You're cranking. You know the feeling, you know, the. let me know in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. You start a butterfly set, even a butterfly race, and you feel like a million bucks. You're just charging through. Heck, you don't even take a breath on the first 25. And then you get to number two, and then number three, and number four, and now you're breathing every single stroke. And so you're never really developing this consistency with your stroke because you have a different breathing pattern every single time. So what you want to focus on, depending on the distance of the, of the thing that you're doing, whether it's a 25, a 50, 10 25s, 10 100s, a race, a 400 IM, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you have a pattern and you already know what that pattern is and your body knows what that pattern is because the more you can train the same thing over and over, you can build that consistency, that mind mapping. You're going to start to really focus on having that good technique. You're not going to lift your head anymore that much because your body's already used to that breathing pattern. So, you know, you've seen great swimmers like Michael Phelps and they breathe every single stroke, whether it's a 100 butterfly or a 200 butterfly or a 50 butterfly, the man doesn't know how to swim, not taking a breath every single stroke, that's fine. I also recommend breathing every two strokes. This is especially good um, for most swimmers, I would say. And so you know your pattern. So if you're training a set and just because you feel great, you're not going to go the whole length without taking a breath or one breath or two. You're going to breathe every two arm strokes and your body's going to know it because that's what you do all the time. Now, of course, if you're racing 100 IM, you know, maybe you only take two breaths anyway uh, and you're more advanced swimmer, maybe you take one, whatever. But for most swimmers, you need to have that game plan ahead of time so you can build that consistency. And I have here, it depends on the race, depends on the workout, depends on the set, depends on your level of swimming ability. But that's a main thing to keep in mind. Now the bonus, I actually have two bonus for you guys. Let's, I should have put like bonus one, bonus two. So they're kind of out of order. But the, the first bonus one is swimming butterfly slow, right? That is a huge mistake. There is no such thing as slow butterfly because, and this is, this is true for breaststroke as well. When you swim breaststroke or butterfly, the short axis strokes, your timing and your body position is so dependent on what's going on, like if you're not swimming at your optimal technique, you're gonna swim really low in the water. And oftentimes the only way you can swim at that optimal technique is if you're swimming relatively fast. You know, unlike freestyle and backstroke, where you can maintain a really high body line and you can just move your arms slower and you can have a slower everything, slower rotation in freestyle and you can go from swimming, you know, a 50 in one minute to a 50 in 30 seconds, like easy. Well, not easy, depends who you are. But, you know, to have that variation in freestyle, 
there isn't really the same thing in butterfly because you're just not able to maintain the stroke mechanics going slow. It doesn't work like that in short axis strokes. So a big mistake is to sort of just swim one speed all the time, and then if you crank it out for a 25, you can go a little bit faster. That's not really how it works. You wanna just get your overall average speeds just faster and faster and faster. So that way, you know, maybe you can only swim 25s or 50s. So instead of doing 10 100s butterfly, you break it up into 20 50s with a little bit more rest so you can maintain that consistency of speed overall. Maybe you do 25s, maybe you do 100s or 200s, half butterfly, half freestyle. A few different training ideas, but it's really important that you don't swim butterfly slow. Now I know if you're a beginner and you're listening to that, you're like, I'm just trying to swim butterfly period, man. I'm just trying to survive. I feel you, I empathize with you. But in general, think about how you can improve that technique for a shorter duration of time, give yourself more, more rest, and then repeat that higher technique, higher speed, higher intensity. Uh, and then finally, bonus number two of two is not following a plan. This is a big one. Kind of like we're talking about with the speed, you have to have a game plan. You can't just go in and say, I'm gonna work on my butterfly today. I'm gonna really focus on this or that. You need to know what you're focusing on and how you're gonna get there. So make sure you follow a structured workout. If you're in a group setting, great. Make sure you're on the same page with your coach about what you wanna work on and they can recommend some great drills. If you don't have that, make sure you check out the MySwim Pro app available for iOS and Android so you can get a personalized training program so you can swim faster and smarter than ever before. We've also got great drills. So if you wanna focus on butterfly, we've got a whole library of different butterfly drills that you can focus on some of the skills that I talked about here in this video. And if you haven't already download the app, make sure you download it. If you're not in the My Swim Pro Facebook group, it's got over 10,000 people, over 100 different countries represented. And if you haven't already checked out my book, Swim Like a Pro, it'll be linked down below in the description. I talk about all these concepts in Butterfly and all the different strokes in that book. Finally, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and let me know in the comments what you think or what questions you have. Wish you guys the very best. I'll see you in the next video and happy swimming.